Hello, I'm Boarding Brute, and today we're going to cover some basics for driving in the front, creating rockets, stuff like that, uh, some simple uh, power tips, and some simple gardening tips, and a little bit of uh, irrigation as well. So, first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, the importance of crops. So if you want a lot of rubber, or you want a lot of rockets, um, you're going to have to kind of figure out the gardening system in the game. Uh, so you can see there's four bars, moisture, illumination, temperature, and mobility. If you get everything kind of in the green, so that's controlling the light, moisture levels, and the temperature, um, and the fertilizer, then your crop's going to yield a lot more. Um, also if you get a decent pickle, which you can acquire pretty easily from drops around the world or even uh, fighting some of the AIs, you'll get a pretty decent blueprint relatively quickly. Uh, so that helps as well when you're farming to use a decent sickle. But the biggest thing is making sure all the little bars are in the green, the arrows there, the indicators, they all need to be in the green. You can do it with, I think, but whatever. So any uh this is a 6x6 six six crop plot. I put about 100 fertilizer in there and it's to do just fine. Uh, I have about 5 of these indoors and I get about 10 to 20,000 on a crop. So, yeah, if you want lots of rockets, free to spend some time to figure out the gardening. Uh, same thing with the rubber. If you want a lot of rubber, you're going to grow dandelions. Kind of just take care of it. We're going to head upstairs, I have a little demo shack set up. And we're going to talk about some of the basics of the power in this game. So there's four power generation methods. One of them is a bicycle generator, that's not really practical. Um, the other is a solar panel, which is only on for a couple of minutes, and it's nighttime, so that's not really practical. The wind generators, they seem to be particularly finicky. Uh, if you have your wind generators placed down on building tiles, the insufficient wind, um, and you're only going to get about half the power, so you can see it's only 36. Whereas this one, it's away from the building tiles, and it's making about 61. So the wind generators are a little bit finicky, and the solar panels, they're not always giving you juice. When they do, not much. So I'd like to say maybe the superstar of this game is probably the diesel generator. It's simple, you unlock it early, uh, gives you 240 units of power. don't really know what to call them in this game, so we're going to call them waffles. gives you 240 waffles of stable power, and it runs about, I don't know, 100 to 200 gas a day. So it's not too bad, it's pretty efficient. Um, what I'd like to say is when you are wiring your base, try and keep your wiring somewhat tidy. Uh, what I like to do is when we're going into a splitter and we're feeding the base is I will carry the power out the center one, carry it on to the rest of the base, and whatever I need to power there. So like a fridge or an AC unit, I'll break it off on the side. Uh, if you loop your power back into itself, you'll see a whole bunch of wacky numbers, and your power is probably going to operate like a strobe light, and it'll be pretty crazy. So, don't short your power. Um, in here we got some stuff, okay? So, we have a sprinkler head, we got a water pump, we got a basic timer loop, right? So this timer loop, um, this hits zero. It'll send a power feed, it'll turn the pump on, and then this will keep it on for a duration and however long you want it to run for, of course. Once this hits zero, it'll turn the power back off to the pump and it'll shut the sprinkler off. So that's kind of an overcomplicated thing. Pretty easy, just 
put a valve down. You can mount them on the walls or the, or the floor. Um, I'd recommend probably just use a valve, right? Because when you're growing, if you're growing indoors or even outdoors, um, you kind of have to control your moisture. You don't want it to be uh, oversaturated. So that's kind of the simple of it. To obtain water, there's uh, two different methods. There's the little dew collectors or there's the water intake. Uh, if you're built close to like a stream or the ocean, you can just put a powered pump in there and get infinite water. Or you can use dew collectors. So myself, we're not built near water. I have a couple of dew collectors. Uh, they have an intake and an output. So you can hook a couple of these up together as long as they're operating with rules of gravity in play. Um, it'll collect water faster than just having one down. So if you have a whole chain of these, you're going to collect water super fast. But keep in mind, water goes down. So that principle in mind, run it down here to a large store. And you'll get tons of water for carbon fiber or whatever you're trying to build. The water, large water tank, intake, and an output, which you don't have to hook this to anything. You can just have the dew collectors pouring water into here to store. Um, however, you, however you want to build it, really. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out is the water tank, the large one, it doesn't seem to fit inside of a single tile space. It does for height, it doesn't for um, the depth here. The width, it fits in a two tile long uh, area, one tile tall, but you need it to be uh, two foundations, which is kind of inconvenient. It's the same thing as the crop plots. Crop plots, the small one does not fit in a one by one. It's just a little bit bigger than a one by one. So keep that in mind when you're designing your base. That uh, if you're doing an indoor garden, make a one tile bigger than what you plan on putting in there, and you'll be fine. Um, okay, so talked about the generator, the wind generators, talked a little bit about the water, um, how to get water, how to store water by making a sprinkler head and pump, you'll be able to pressurize a water line, water your plants, right? So that's for an indoor setting. Um, there's two different air control units, one's an AC, an air conditioner, and one's a heater. So use those accordingly. If you're in the snow biome, you're probably going to have a bunch of heaters. If you're in the rest of the map somewhere, you're probably going to use an AC. It's pretty easy to adjust the temperature. Lighter here. Hit apply, and you're good to go. So that's kind of some basics. That's kind of some basics. Um, a little bit more advanced. I use a circuit similar to this on my blast furnace, which is uh, a timer that counts out the, the hours and the amount of hours I would like it to run to. Um, that's kind of more of an advanced thing. You don't really have to do that. Most people, you'll just put a switch on the wall and you'll be good with it. <laughs> Easier, honestly. Uh, there's a few turrets in the game, which you unlock relatively early. Um, Obviously, in this game, for PvP, you're looking to defend against uh, tanks, armored vehicles, players, and helicopters. So, defend against tanks, you're probably going to have a lot of Devastator auto guns. It fires the large armor pierce round, which in the vehicle crafting bench uh, for players, and you can also kind of set these for helicopters as well, armored vehicles, tanks, you have a little list of what you can make this attack. Uh, but for players, helicopters, you have the automatic turrets, there's actually a better version of this as well. But this one's pretty easy to operate. This takes rifle ammunition, which you can make really, really easy. 
uh, the Sparrow AA system. This is your defense against helicopters. So it fires the portable SAM rockets. So with this turret, we're going to talk about the um, so for the Sparrow, when you unlock it, it doesn't actually give you the rockets to use with it. You're going to have to go to weapons and you're going to have to unlock the rocket launcher called the Woodpecker, where you'll see portable samples. So that's kind of like a two part thing. But yeah, that's kind of three of the turrets early game these ballista turrets these are actually really really kind of simple and fun they don't take any power they take uh, stone arrows as ammunition which at you know the early levels when I'm running around farming and stuff um, I always have stone arrows in my inventory crafting um, some players use rope I found that stone arrows give a little bit more experience and um, so you can use them uh, for your base defenses well if you just set up like a big wall a whole bunch of ballistas there and put a couple hundred in each uh, that'll help you take care of some of the higher rounds the space beacons little base defense great great way for getting the uh, ether shards and blueprints uh, as well as a little bit of XP so I would strongly recommend you take the time to actually do these. And like I said, for the higher levels, you know, you, you're going to see some problems. So, you know, maybe make some med kits and stuff like that. And have some ballista turrets. However you want to do it. That is your call. Um, talking about the SAM turret again, just for a second. Uh, one of the big things in this game is alcohol right you need alcohol to make basically any of the rockets and so if you take the time to set up a decent uh, farm system you're gonna have tons of alcohol you're gonna have tons of rockets which it's gonna help your gameplay uh, the two things you need for alcohol is obviously your wheat source but you also need hops so hops they're actually poppy plants that's where you get hops in this game don't ask me how it works it's whatever but uh, you can find the um, poppy plants pretty much growing everywhere in the swamp biome which is kind of middle south of the map uh, so travel down there acquire some poppies and just have a few growing it doesn't really take too much hops but that's what the uh, that's what the fermenter runs on so, got some hops in there, activate, and we have a bunch of alcohol, okay? So, we've talked about the power sources, we talked about some basic turrets, uh, we've spoken about the water tank. I, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, these are the different batteries. I've, I've tried to find a use for all the batteries, but honestly, for the amount of setup and stuff like that you have to do, and the amount of components that you have to have to make a decent battery system, it's a lot of work. A lot of work. Titanium battery, this is the large one. Decent capacity, and the current load is 500, so that's actually about 250. Um, it's it, it's whatever. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it was my favorite thing to mess around with, but yeah, it, they do their purpose. I guess if you have large solar array, that would be one thing. But for my own opinion, I think the amount of solar panels that you have to actually you know, power a, sub a substantial amount of turrets and stuff like that. It's just a lot of work. Uh, in a one tile cubed space, using half walls, you could place four diesel generators and have like 960 power, something like that. So, you know, 
cost versus space versus how much setup it is. Eh, batteries just aren't doing it for me. Right? Uh, this is kind of what I have going on for um, my base, which is the timer alternating current between charge and use of two different battery systems. Uh, so I've taken the time to kind of play around with everything a bit. And yeah, I just, I have four diesel generators. Seems to run everything okay. I mean, then when you're going around to power bulk equipment, so all three of these uh, AC units, pretty much every in this game input and but I'm pretty certain so you can like daisy chain these all put them on a switch and then you know if you're not attending your gardens or you're not growing crops or whatever you just cut that power usage off and uh, cut down the power usage of your base so that's that's what tips a couple um, I will show this one more time. If you decide to utilize something like this for your turret system, where it counts out your peacetime, and then it counts out your wartime, and it keeps your turrets on for the wartime, if you do something like this, for one thing, set it up so that the time overlaps your wartime a little bit, so it starts maybe hour before your wartime and it carries through maybe a half an hour to an hour after your wartime so wartime is about three hours in this game um set this for about five uh i'll show the circuit one more time just gonna have to kind of take a screenshot and copy it yourself uh but this is the program switch so basically um once you build this and I recommend you test it with smaller increments of time. Um, once you build this circuit, you basically wait until, you know, whenever you want to set it. So say I want this to start an hour before wartime. I want this to run for five hours. So I'd set this to five hours. I'd set the timers to count out 60 minutes each. And I would set this to um, whatever the remainder. And uh, I would hit the switch twice. What that's going to do is default the turrets on. Again, this is whatever your time is before combat time, right? So for me, I go about an hour to a half an hour. So I wait till time before combat, hit the switch twice. It defaults everything. The right circuit will run so your turrets will be on for five hours and then they'll shut off and count out your peace time if you're going to do something like this uh there is a little bit of a fail safe you can do which is take your power output off this wall and put that into a not gate so by having that circuit there um a not gate if there's signal input, it will not allow power to go through. But as soon as that circuit gets broken and it's no longer getting power, the input, it'll allow current to go through. So basically what's happening is if the wall with your timer gets blown up and it breaks that circuit, it'll default all the turrets to be on. Okay, um, I was kind of thinking of a use for that system this seems to be a really decent use for it um you could probably utilize it too if you were um, building a base with big two by two wall tiles for the shells uh you could make a circuit simple circuit and just have it run to like a coupler on each two by two tile Right, and then if one wall gets oh, one wall gets blown up, 
that circuit's no longer running, all your turrets are on. So that would be a useful thing for, like, if you have interior turrets. Um, I'd probably put something like that on, because then they're not running all the time. Even, say, you make your timer for your outside turrets, you put a knock gate on the interior turrets, it'd be a thing to do. Then it flicks them all on. Who knows? That's up to you. Uh, the only thing is, you can't do that with the doors. Right? You can't put a electrical component on the door. So, it has its limitations. Everything in this game has its limitations. Uh, as far as the battery banks, like I said, they're a little bit tricky. They're a little bit tricky. Uh, my turrets right now don't really take much power. So, having these four connected like this, we're getting about 400 stable power output. 398 minus 2 power for each coupler. Uh, so my turrets and the timer for my turrets are on their own little battery grid. Not a bad thing to do. I mean, if you get into someone's base and you hear generators, myself personally, I'd probably throw a couple um, explosive packs at the wall and try and kill their power. So having a battery system for your turrets, not the worst idea. Uh, another thing, another thing uh, that would be a relatively decent recommendation is wherever you plan on having turrets, use one of the small titanium batteries and place it with the turret, right? So say I have a turret on a one by one, on a one cube by one cube mansion, inside that box, place a small titanium battery and run the power through the battery, then to the turret. What that's gonna do is if your power feed is blown up or one of the couplers is blown up in your base going to your turret, your turret's not going to lose power immediately, it'll drain that battery. So your turret will stay alive for a little bit while well, hopefully get that fixed. So that would be kind of the ideal scenario for your batteries. If you set up a giant battery bank, so if your generators get blown up, um, your turrets all run off a giant battery bank, like I said, it's not the worst idea either. Uh, just keep in mind you're not going to get free power in this game, so whatever you do, um, you know, try and do it with the intention of having a stable current. So, whether you're using four of these to create 960, or you're using them, you know, to create like 1800, or you're using eight of these. However you do it, but you definitely want stable current. Wind farms, they're the wind farms and the solar panels, they just take up a lot. Like I said, for them to work accurately is a lot of space. But anyways, well, I hope some of this information helps. And, uh, yeah, play around with everything. Uh, the game is still early, early, so there's not a lot of uh, information content out on it so the best thing to do is probably play around with some things and figure the game out okay and that's all for today have a wonderful time if you found any of this helpful and you want me to make some more shitty content in the future by all means like and subscribe and uh yeah I'll keep the quality content rolling. Bye for now.